Welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve video. Today I'm going to share with you a whole lot of my custom keyboard shortcuts and my workflow for editing so that you can zip through cutting and editing your footage like a pro. We will only be working in the media, cut and edit tabs for this video. If you want to learn my shortcuts in the color and fairlight tabs, let me know in the comment section below and I'll make a video about that too. To follow along, you will need my custom keyboard shortcuts. The link is in the description below. Once you click on that, you will land up on my Buy Me A Coffee page. We're here in the middle. Under Extras, you will see DaVinci Resolve Keyboard Shortcuts. This is available for free. Hit Get This. Put in your details. Just put in zero over here. Once you've downloaded that file, you need to unzip it using 7-zip or WinZip. On Mac, it does it automatically. Inside, there are two files. This is how you can install it, some instructions. And here is the actual keyboard shortcuts. This is what we need. Now back in DaVinci Resolve, my first step usually is to go into project settings and set everything up. However, we're going to take things slow and go through all the shortcuts. So the first shortcut today is Control, Alt and K. That would be Command, Option and K on Mac. So since I'm on a PC, everything is going to be Control, Alt. If you're on a Mac, it'll be Command, Option. Just keep that in mind. So this brings up the keyboard customization. This is where I've made all my changes and created my keyboard shortcuts. You need to go up in the top right corner and click these three dots, import presets. That's where our keyboard shortcuts we downloaded. Hit open and that's it. You can click save and close. All right, so this is where we usually begin. Now, the first thing I always do is go into project settings. That would be shift and the number nine. So this brings up the project settings for this project. You can set your frame rate over here. Mine's at 24. I'm going to change it to 23.976. You can set up your color management, general options, other stuff like that. And hit save. Now it's time to bring our media in. I recommend the following. Open up your file explorer or finder on the Mac. Create a folder for your project. In there, make several folders like footage, music, sound effects, timelines, and let's add one more. This is a shortcut. Control, Shift, and N. That creates a new folder. Let's call this Render. This is where I will export my final renders. And under the footage, is where I have all my cameras and footage. So if it's a drone footage, I would make a drone folder. If the Canon R5, then so on and so forth. Now, the reason why I do this, you will understand shortly. Now, there are several ways you can import footage into DaVinci Resolve. The first being Control I, and you can import your footage from here. The other way is you can browse the media storage over here on the left, and then drag your footage down into the media pool down here. The third way is to drag your files from any folder into the media pool down here. As you can see, my footage is imported, but there is no folder structure maintained. I do not want this. I'm going to hit Ctrl Z to undo. But this time, I'm going to drag this entire project's folder down here onto the left side under master. So as you can see, I have my project here, sound effects, music render, my footage, footage from the cameras and timelines. So I have some drone footage here that we're going to use for this demonstration today. As I said, Shift 9 brings up the project settings. However, Shift 1 to 8 also have several functions. Shift 1 brings up all your projects. One quick tip is here, you can right click and turn on dynamic project switching so you can switch between different projects without actually closing them. Shift 2 takes us to this media page. Shift 3 to cut page. Shift 4 to the edit. Shift 5 to fusion. Shift 6 for color. Shift 7 for fairlight and shift 8 for deliver. I love the cut page because you can very quickly go through a lot of footage unlike any other video editing software out there. If you have the speed editor from DaVinci Resolve, this is where you would use it for its maximum potential. However, on the go, on my Mac, I usually use my keyboard shortcuts. So the first thing would be to come down over here and double click on any of these footages and you would see it out here in the preview window. And this is where you can slide and edit. However, I prefer the source tape. The shortcut for that is Shift Q or this little icon up here. And now you have all this footage down on your source tape. Your timeline is down here. So there's a lot going on here. Now I have a keyboard shortcut to get rid of this inspector on the right hand side. You just hit shift tab and that's gone. You cannot really get rid of the media pool. You can change its size, of course. However, on the other pages, let's say, let's go to the edit page. I can hit tab and get rid of my media pool as well. Back to the cut page. You need to double click the footage before Shift-Q would work. With my source tape loaded, I can hit space bar to play and pause. However, I prefer to use the keys J, K and L. L to move forward. If I hit it again, it'll move at double the speed, four times the speed and so on. K to pause, J to play backwards. The same thing applies. You can 2X, 4X, 8X and so on. While I'm playing back my footage, I can hit I to set an in point and O to set an out point, K to stop. To clear my in and out points, I can use the shortcut Alt X. And if I want to select the entire clip, I can hit X and that 
puts an in and out point at the beginning and at the end of the clip. I can be over here and hit X again. If you have your in and out points set up anywhere on the source tape or any of the clips, you can hit Alt and forward slash and that'll play the in and out. If you hit Control and forward slash, that turns on the loop icon on and off. So with loop on, so I'll just shut my in and out and Alt forward slash will just loop that clip. This is great when you're doing your work on the in the Fairlight page with sound effects to keep listening to it and making sure you have it hit at the right point. There are two more shortcuts here that are extremely important. You can hit Shift S to insert the clip or Shift A to append that clip. I usually prefer using append so my left hand is always on Shift A on the cut page my, and my right hand is on J, K and L. If you're going through very quickly, you can hit L, keep moving forward, double the speed, in and out point, shift A, keep moving while it's still playing, increase the speed even more, in and out, shift A, keep going, I can stop, rewind a little bit, all right there, my in point, forward, out, shift A, you get the gist. Let's now move on to the edit page. So on the cut page, I do my quick edit, my rough cut, whatever you want to call it. On the edit page is where I refine my edit. Please note that you will need my keyboard shortcuts, which is available for free in order to use all these shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve. Many of them are the default ones, but most of them that I use are custom ones. All right, so on the edit page, the first thing I do is on the timeline, I turn on selection follows playhead. Make sure there's a tick mark on that. What this does, is as you move your playhead, the clip right under it gets selected. This will help make the edit process really fast when using the shortcuts. In order to refine my edit, I can use the mouse here. However, my J, K and L keys will work on the edit page as well and that is what I use. I also use the Q, W and E keys to trim the beginning or the end of the clip. Now, if I would do this the manual way, I would select the blade tool, cut over here, hit the backspace to delete, that leaves a gap. I would then need to go and select the selection mode or A, select this gap, hit backspace again to delete that. You can also use ripple delete. However, again, you need to use the blade tool for that. So what I would do is I would use my L key, move forward, K to stop, hit Q to trim the beginning of this clip, keep moving forward, I can go twice the speed, stop there, hit E and delete the rest of the clip. So that refines this clip. Same way I can move forward, I just want it here, hit E, trim the end, this is too long, go back, K, trim the beginning, trim the end. If I do want to split a clip in two, I have the W key, which will just split the clip. So all of this work can be done without taking your hand off the keyboard. I don't even need to stop, I can just keep trimming, split, split again, trim the end, and so on. There is another way of doing what I just did and making your selects. So you would once again browse the clip, pause, make a split, keep moving forward, pause, split again, and now using the Alt and Up arrow key, you would move that clip up. Keep going. And as you can see, because we had selection follows playhead, my clips are automatically selected. I can hit Alt, up arrow key, and the clip is moved onto the next layer. Let's do this one more time. Now, these are my favorites, all right? I can just drag all of this, Control C to copy, bring my player over here, and Control V to paste. However, there's a lot of gap in here. With these clips still selected, I can hit Escape, and that deletes all the gap between them. This is really useful if you want to make sure that your original remains untouched and your selects are on the separate layer altogether. To refine your edit even more, you can use the arrow keys. Each time you press the left arrow key or the right arrow key, you will move one frame to the left or to the right. When you press up, you move to the beginning of the clip or to the previous clip. So you can very quickly jump through all the clips by using the up and down arrow keys. To move one second forward or back, you can press the shift and the right or left arrow keys. So you move shift one second, one second, and using the shift up and down arrow keys, you can jump between markers. So using the M key, let's go forward a little bit, hit another marker, 
and some more another marker with a shift up and down you can jump between the markers as you could see the markers were added onto my clip itself however if nothing is selected and if i hit m it adds the marker to the timeline when you double click you can give it a name and a color you can also remove the marker from here now let's look at some keyboard shortcuts where we need to use the mouse as well so using a scroll wheel on your mouse as a button or as a scroll you can zoom in zoom out by pressing and moving you can pan the screen around to zoom to fit this preview window you need to hit the z key if you hit shift z you will zoom to fit the timeline when way zoomed in and I hit shift z i can fit this in the timeline window in the timeline window you can very quickly zoom into a clip by pressing the alt key and also scrolling up zoom out by alt and scrolling down you can press the control key and scroll left and right to move the entire timeline towards the left or towards the right when you press shift you can expand the size of the layer or reduce the size this is especially useful when you're working with several layers and audio clips as well and to fit everything back on the screen on the timeline shift z now let's say for example i have two clips which are very similar and i want to choose between them i can always select a clip and hit the d key to disable it and enable it so now i don't see the preview of this one only this one i can disable this and nothing is visible as i mentioned m to create a marker and alt m to delete the marker so you need to be right on the marker to be able to delete it other shortcut keys are a for the selection tool t for the trim edit mode when you're in the selection mode you can move things around and you can edit the beginning and the end of clips like so in the trim edit mode however you can slip and slide the clips you can alter the beginning i mean the length of the clip by altering the beginning and the end of the clip you can use ctrl z to undo ctrl shift z to redo you can also use the tilde key as an undo button a back into the selection mode to enable or disable snapping you can press the n key so that unchecks this so when you're moving a your playhead or when you're moving clips around it will not snap sometimes that's required if you're using clips with audio which are linked to each other then you can edit them separately by unlinking them with this icon here or by pressing ctrl shift and l to turn it on and off to select everything on the right side of the playhead you can hit y and all the clips on the activated layer so this is important will be selected and if you hit ctrl y everything on the left will be selected all right now let's look at clip attributes so everything you see in the inspector on the right over here are basically the attributes you make any changes they get recorded on that clip so let's just say we zoom in onto this clip here and we reposition it that is recorded you have keyframes on the right side over here for all of these attributes so on this clip we have a zoom and a position applied I can hit Ctrl C to copy those. I can head over to the next clip, Alt V. This opens the paste attribute dialog and I can choose what I want from here. So let's choose position and zoom. So now those attributes are applied to this clip as well. You can select multiple clips and do the same. As you can see, the position and zoom has been applied. There are times when you want to remove attributes from a clip you can select a clip or several clips together and you can hit Control shift and x to remove attributes you can choose which attributes to remove in this case i'll remove all and apply and those attributes have been removed so this video is getting pretty long i will link a video up here where you can see these shortcuts in action on the edit page there are still a few more shortcuts left like the retime retime curves keyframing i will make a separate video about that please subscribe and like this video if this has helped you Go get my free keyboard shortcuts from my buy me a coffee page. And if you found it helpful and would like to buy me a coffee, feel free to do so. Thank you and see you in the next one.